Hi, I'm Dave Bugney, and this video will explore the removal and replacement of this round six foot diameter culvert, which is a complete barrier to fish passage with a much larger pipe arch culvert, which has been designed to satisfy the requirements of Oregon's new private forest accord. This work is taking place on private industrial forest land in the late summer and early fall of 2022 within Little Eagle Creek a medium-sized coho salmon and steelhead stream and which is a tributary of the North Fork Eagle Creek within Clackamas County. The culvert outfall was perched about two feet above the plunge pool. This problem, coupled with an insufficient plunge pool depth, long culvert length, and high water velocity within the culvert, created this 50-year complete barrier to fish passage. The previous landowner, Longview Fiber, recognized the problem that this culvert created for fish passage and tried to rectify it in about 2003 by placing these large logs just downstream of the plunge pool to create a backwater condition. That effort did not work. Three options were selected for evaluation based upon their expected longevity and heavy load carrying capabilities for logging road of this type. A pipe arch culvert, an open arch culvert, and a precast concrete bridge. Evaluation of costs and procurement and construction schedules for these options revealed that the pipe arch culvert was the best solution. Prior to and during the early phases of construction, a fish biologist from the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife screened and then periodically electroshocked the work area up and downstream. Any fish salvaged were relocated elsewhere. Only cutthroat trout and sculpin were found. Little Eagle Creek is a medium-sized salmon steelhead stream and historically was a good producer of coho salmon and winter steelhead. It is the third largest tributary of the North Fork Eagle Creek behind Bear and Souter Creeks. The entire watershed is about 2,000 acres with a median annual flow at the culvert site of about 4 CFS and a 100-year flood of about 300 CFS. Culvert replacement will open up about 4 miles of previously inaccessible stream habitat. After the rough excavation and temporary stream diversion were completed, the final excavation to depth was performed. Downstream is to the left. Note the temporary earthen coffer dam just ahead of the track hoe. The following time-lapse video captures the progress of construction from this point through the next 11 days. It captures work from the downstream end looking upstream. All work was done during the permitted in-water work window. A view looking downstream of the excavated trench with the new culvert bedding being placed. Note the minor seepage that developed, which was pumped out each morning and distributed to several upland areas. The pipe arch culvert selected is designed to meet the requirements of Oregon's new private forest accord, which requires that it pass a 100-year flood and be a minimum width of 1.2 times the active channel width plus 2 feet. For this project, that translates to a 17-foot span by 11-foot 2-inch rise 10 gauge corrugated galvanized steel culvert. This shop drawing reveals the culvert pieces as if the culvert were unrolled and laid flat. It is 54 feet long, laid along a 4% slope to match the average stream gradient that exists about 200 feet both up and downstream of the project area. Above the new culvert, shown in red, one can see the reduced slope of the original culvert, which led to its perch nature. It is imperative that the culvert be properly laid out in the beginning, otherwise it will be assembled incorrectly. Here, the contact engineered solutions engineer assists with the initial layout. Culvert assembly continues. The contractor completed the culvert shell in three days. Over 2,000 high strength bolts were used and were all torqued with impact wrenches to project specifications. Due to how the sections are intended to fit together, a specific assembly sequence must be followed. Extremely little precipitation fell during the work period, allowing for an efficient and clean operation. A view of the completed culvert shell. Note the beveled ends. In order to not shift, deform, or rotate the culvert, backfilling proceeds in nearly an equal fashion on either side, with two track hoes and compacting crews working simultaneously. Compacting occurred on either side in a balanced fashion in approximately 8-inch lifts. 
Very high horizontal thrust forces are produced at the culvert haunches in response to the arch action to transfer vertical dead and live loads into the surrounding soil. The soil must adequately resist these thrusts. Therefore, the backfill material placed against the culvert must be rigorously compacted to project specifications along the haunches. Stream simulation material, composed chiefly of native sands, gravels, cobbles, and boulders, is being placed within the culvert to a minimum thickness of 20 inches to satisfy the private forest accord. A pebble count was conducted upstream of the project to determine the aggregate gradation. Boulder constellations were placed upstream, downstream, and within the middle of the culvert to assist in retaining the material and to provide pools within the culvert. Key boulders are twice the size of the largest inventoried in the pebble count. Boulders and other aggregates were brought down into the culvert with a skid steer. Warehouser provided the boulders from their adjacent rock pit. This view, looking downstream, shows the temporary stream diversion through a 36-inch diameter polyethylene culvert as well as the upstream temporary cofferdam. During construction, the average measured flow rate through the temporary culvert was very low, less than one cubic foot per second. Backfilling over the culvert continues with the road grade coming into view. The road base was also placed in about eight inch lifts and each lift was compacted with a vibratory roller. Warehouser provided much of the backfill and road base material. The culvert was successfully load tested as soon as the minimum cover depth was reached by driving a fully loaded dump truck over it. The road grade continues to be built up to blend into the existing approach grades and rock armoring of both the up and downstream ends of the culvert is ongoing. In this photo, one can see the difference in size between the previous culvert, which is suspended from the track hoe, and the new culvert, which also has about a two foot thickness of stream simulation materials within it. It's quite a difference in culvert size, plus the perched nature of the previous culvert has been eliminated with this new construction. Once the road bed has been completed, cleanup begins. The old rotten backwater logs and the alder trees that needed to be removed to facilitate construction are spread around the site to serve as coarse wood for erosion control and wildlife habitat. Lastly, native grass seed is spread and straw and straw wattles are distributed to control erosion. This has been a successful and rewarding project. It will be exciting to see how the simulated stream bed within the culvert changes over time in response to the much higher stream flows. I trust the Coho and Steelhead will now find this small portion of Little Eagle Creek a pleasant part of their journey to additional previously inaccessible spawning habitat.